Hi guys, I'm Darren and in today's video we're going to be looking at how to get switches for things like flight modes from your radio to your flight controller. So let's take a look. So it's been a little while since I've done a For Newbies video, so I thought I'd take a look at the next thing that involves the transmitter, and that is getting things like flight modes uh, and other controls such as arming and you know, auto trim, auto tune, that sort of thing from your transmitter to your flight controller. So this is quite a simple step. We're going to take a look on the transmitter first and I'll show you how to set it up. So this will be fine for anything using OpenTX or you know a, a derivative. We'll take a look on there. It will be done on the display so it will be as you see it. And then what we'll do is we'll take a look in iNav as well. Now I'm not going to set up every mode. I'm just going to do some very basic three position switches. Um, I have other tutorials on how to do combinations of switches on the same channel, that sort of thing. So you can use that for things like flight modes. And I'm also going to be working on another video quite soon, which is about stacking switches. Um, what that means is on a single RC channel, you can have two switches sending over individual commands so you can use them in INAV. So it sounds like it's overcomplicated, but for things like Crossfire, which are limited to 12 channels, you may need them for a more complex build. But anyway, that's above for newbie sort of stuff, but it's something coming in the future. So what we're going to do is first take a look on the transmitter. So we'll head over to the desk. OK, guys, so here we are at the desk. And the first thing I'm going to do is create a new model. So we know that we're doing this from scratch. So I'm just going to put it in my testing folder and create model just a standard plane okay so that's all pretty basic stuff as you know for iNav we just need a standard transmitter model so we just need our four AETR channels on the inputs and the four AETR on the mixer if you don't know that I'll put a video up for my newbies guide for setting up a transmitter in INAV that covers all that information in there and also how to get your uh, sticks moving the correct way for INAV so I'll put a link in the top corner for that so what we're going to do as I say we're just going to do some basic switches so I'm not going to go into any over the top programming this is purely going to be sending a switch to INAV so we're just going to have some very very basic things we're going to have an arm switch we're going to have free flight modes and we're going to have auto trim and auto tune like i say i've got more advanced switch combination videos uh elsewhere on my channel and i will also make some new ones with even more options for people so if you're interested in that stuff please take a look there they're, they're really good because all the switches are using one single rc channel they're, they're not individual channels per switch so it saves your channels uh, but it also means that you are actually choosing the flight mode that you want you you don't have inav deciding for you for example say we've got two three position switches let's say for example it's manual acro angle this one's return to home position hold and cruise for example now if this is in position hold, uh, return to home i now will always use return to home but say we wanted to be in come with is either position hold or cruise that's fine as it is that'll be in position hold or cruise but as soon as we knock that into angle into manual that will overtake that switch on everything apart from return to home so by defining it yourself you can actually choose what flight mode you want so it's a bit better as far as that goes but anyway let's get to a basic setup so the first thing i'm going to do is add an arm switch on channel five so we just go i'm just doing this all in mixes so we can give it a name now we just go down and choose the source so i always use this sf at the back here for arming there is a glitch with currently with uh free sky protocols so if you're using free sky there is actually a, a a good way to set up the arm let's let's cover it now it takes five seconds so we'll go back to inputs 
I'm going to create the arm input and we're going to select our switch in here. So that's our arm switch, which is all well and good. Now we go back to the mixer. In this one, we'll edit it. And instead of choosing that as the source, if we flick it, uh, it's not going to work. So if we go down to inputs and choose arm, you'll see that it's working. It doesn't look any different, but it actually is different because we're controlling it via an input. What that means is we can reverse it easily. So what we want to do when we set up the modes, I'll cover it in there and then we'll jump back into this for showing how to reverse it. So that's our arm switch anyway. We're just going to do exactly the same with our modes. I'll get there in the end. And again, we can set, set our source. Now, uh, you could use the free, the six position pot if you have one. So on like a radio master, it's uh, six buttons up here on this Horus. It's the six way knob. And I believe on the new X20, there's going to be six buttons around the bottom here somewhere. But uh, I would actually combine those with a switch as well. Again, I have another video on that. I'll put a link up in the corner to how to set that up. It basically gives eight flight modes, but it means manual and return to home are still on a switch. So they're nice and easy to get at. I did flow just a six way pot, but I did have a slight emergency one time and it was not easy just to find the position you want for either manual or return to home. Having it on a switch is a lot more natural. But anyway, what we're going to do is I'm going to choose this big switch here, SB, for our flight modes. So what we'll do is we'll set up one more and we'll call this tune. And I'm going to set that up on this switch, SG. So that's basically it. That's that's all we need to do in the transmitter. As I say, you can send a lot more things over. You can have your LED switching, auto launch, camera switching. There's there's so much stuff you can do as well as you know have multiple flight modes. We've we've we're only setting up for free on this, so it's a very basic setup. But anyway, that's the transmitter side done. If we go into the outputs, you can see on the arrows that they are actually working. So that is all going and getting sent. First thing I need to do before I show you an iNavo is actually turn on the receiver, otherwise, or the, uh, the module, or we won't actually get any um, anything sent over. So obviously you need to have your receiver bound. So that's that set up. Right, so let's head over to the desktop and have a look in iNav. Right, so we're in iNav, and what I'm going to do is just connect to the flight controller. And I'm just going to pop to the receiver page just to make sure that we're connected and working. So, yep, that's all good. And what we can do is on here, we can actually check to see the channels that are working for our switches. So if I switch the arm switch, you can see that's working. Channel six for our flight modes and then channel seven is our tuning. So that's working great. So now what we need to do is head into the uh, modes page. And at the moment, this is what you'll get when you have a fresh install. You'll have absolutely nothing. So what we need to do, we'll do our arming first. So let's add a range. Now, this here is what I was talking about with a free sky glitch. So what happens, you'll see at the moment, this pointer is resting here, and that is at 988 microseconds. And if you have the glitch, what can happen is basically random channels will sit at 988 microseconds. It only lasts for 40 to 80 milliseconds. So it's a really sh short amount of time, but it is enough to disarm your model. So to get around that, we just make sure that when we're armed, that is here. As I mentioned before, that might not be where you want your arm switch to be. So at the moment, this is perfect for me because I have my armed pointing away and I have my disarmed towards me. So this is the correct way around for me. But if you prefer to be armed towards yourself, which I actually think is probably why people accidentally disarm, I think it's because it's easier to knock it back into that position than it is 
pull it forward. But anyway, if you want to be pointing towards you to be armed, we just need to make a quick change in OpenTX. So what we're going to do is again back into the model menu. And this time we go into inputs, find our arm, and we want to edit that. And all we're going to do is reverse the weight. Now, you could do this in the mode screen. But if you want to later add uh, other parameters to the modes, uh, it's better to do it here. It's out of the way and you treat it as an input rather than just something you're using. That's it. It's done. It's reversed. So what we can do is pop back to iNav and you'll notice that it's the switch. I didn't move. It's still towards me, but it's, uh, it's now jumped to this low end. So away is disarmed towards his armed. So that's how you do a reversal and still keep the little marker in this position. Right, so next let's add some float modes. Now, because this is really simple, we've just added a free position switch. I'm just gonna set up three modes that I think are gonna be the most useful if you're a learner. So the first mode I'm gonna add is angle. So this is on channel six. Now, it's the only thing I wish they would put the auto thing in from beta flight on beta flight. There's an option for auto. You just click auto then move the switch and it automatically selects that channel. That'd be a really nice addition to iNav. So I think I'm going to put in a, a change request for that because that'd be awesome. But anyway, so this, I don't actually need to do anything for, I've put the switch in the middle position. Our marker is here on screen. So, angle will be active if i save it you'll see it lights up blue so don't worry about this every time so you'll see with return to home that it won't actually light up blue um, it's because it will only light up blue when the flight controller allows it to if the flight controller can't actually get into that state at that time it won't light up so again it would be really nice if there was an indicator just to you know confirm that the switch would work if the flight controller says it's okay but as a general rule of thumb if it's in that space you're, you're good to go so what we're going to do is add two more modes so the first is nav return to home so i'm going to put the switch away from me so again you'll notice that this is in that fail in that uh glitch position so it will glitch it will go to return to home so we can save that then you notice it hasn't lit up blue but because we're in this region it's fine and the final mode i'm going to add is manual and manual we know will be here so if i switch back it's in that position so we'll save that so with the save you only get a little notification up here there's nothing big that pops up but if you watch when i click save it eventually does does change so that is our three modes all done so as i say it's it's not very many modes and i have other tutorials for getting more modes on this on that channel so please go check those out if you're interested but as i say this is really just the basics for getting people up in the air so why these modes right manual is a great mode because it doesn't use the pif controller at all so if you get into trouble you switch it into manual and you'll have full manual control over the aircraft so there won't be anything externally influencing it so it's all down to your hands so that's why that's a really good thing to do uh, angle is really good for you know testing stuff making sure that your board alignment is correct just making sure the stabilization works correctly and if that works fine and you have a decent gps lock then return to home will bring you back home so they're three very basic flight modes this is as basic as i'd ever want to get I, I do like having other flight modes but if you can only have three they would be the three i'd probably go for so next what we're going to do is add up add our um, auto tune and auto trim which is our final switch so i'm going to have it in the middle to be off so i'm going to put channel 7 auto tune so I always have it towards me for auto tune for some reason. I think it's because it's tune. It's got you in it. So it sounds like you're pulling it towards you is auto tune. Just an easy way to remember it. And then if you go back the other way again, channel seven and there's our servo auto trim. So you can see 
trim works tune doesn't light up again because it's not flying so there we go that is how to add flight modes very simply this would be a very basic setup but it would get you in the air so if you found this video useful please give it a thumbs up and also don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon as it will help get this video out to more people who may also be looking to learn how to do this in INAV. So thank you very much, guys. I do really appreciate everyone watching and the comments. And also some people have left me a, a coffee and I really, really appreciate uh, you guys as well. So thank you very much for that. Um, see you on the next one. I'd say if you can get out and fly at the moment, do have a great time. I'm really looking forward to getting out myself, but see you very soon. Bye-bye.